What comes to mind when you hear the word economics? A theory of resource management? Human relations? Or maybe just simply money? Today at McIntyre Studios, we are joined by economist Delilah Sheffield to tackle one of economics' greatest foundations, classical economics. Our studio's very own and active interviewer, Jennifer Arden, will be participating too. This is Classical Economics. Good morning. My name's Jennifer Arden. I'm Delilah. Good morning. Shall we get this interview started? Of course. Great. Before I start asking, though, I just want to make sure that you know about the topic we're going to discuss today, which is about classical economics. Uh, Yes, that's a great topic. I'm quite familiar with this one. That's awesome. Let's start with this theories, history, and key takeaways. I feel like those would really lay the groundwork for our understanding of this topic and how exactly this came to be. Oh, but of course, I'd just like to preface this statement on a little view on a common misconception that I hear a lot about economic theories. Okay. These theories are refined understanding passed through generations of analysis, giving us deeper insights into one of the biggest driving forces behind what makes our world really turn, economics. How interesting. It really is, isn't it? And to give a big idea of what classical economics is, you can try to associate it with the concept of capitalism introduced around the time of the Industrial Revolution. The shift in power came from the increase in communication it brought about, giving the people more power and influence over the economy. So basically, what you're saying is that it's mostly a capitalist theory? Well, inherently, yes. Yes, it is. The reason why this is is because of how people at the time heavily rejected the idea of a government or a general central powers intervention. This was mostly known as the laissez-faire, French for let it be. Oh, I see. So what concepts were brought into um, this as a result of the analyses done at the time and how do they tie into the economic problems? So, in the context of the economic problem being that the struggles associated with working around scarcity, classical economics brought around strong concepts that help us better understand how markets work, as well as what I mentioned earlier, the shift in power in market control over the central powers of the people. In addition to that, let's take one concept developed during that time as an example. You must be familiar with the principle of supply and demand, right? I sure am. That's great then you must know that the principle of supply and demand remains as one of the strongest and most used concepts in economics, even today. One way to look at it is through a law conceived by the great classical economist, Jean-Baptiste Say. He states that supply creates its own demand. Basically, the fruits of an employee's labor, usually money, will be transferred back into the market through, through them using the same money to purchase the products and services offered. Or as long as there's a supply of a thing, there will be a demand for it, suggesting that economic growth stems from an increased production and not demand. I never knew that this theory played such a big role in the development of the economic theories that came after it. It's amazing. Were there other concepts that this theory introduced that stuck along? Definitely. Classical economics brought in the very concepts of pricing attached to an item or service value. How those things are distributed in accordance with the principle of what I've already explained supply and demand. So how exactly did this theory start its decline? Surely by now another theory has overtaken it in terms of the newer ideas being introduced into the mix. Oh yes, that is a great question. Arguably one of this theory's greatest competitors was the Keynesian economics. Its prevalence began when the Great Depression completely changed the, how we saw the market. The economy could no longer sustain through the people's power alone, so we had to turn to what classical economics was made to oppose in the first place, government intervention. Keynesian economics reliance on the central power greatly surpassed classical economics' usability and societal integration during the Great Depression. With the people being out of power, it made more sense to rely on, the, on a governing body. Amazing. What 
puzzles me though is how such a great theory could have been overtaken, at least in the context of another one being better integrated into a society. Well, that's exactly it. Classical economics was arrogant in its ideals that it aimed to solve problems that no other theory, w whether in the past or the future, could solve. E Economist John R. Cummins pointed out that classical economics attempted to create solutions to create problems that aren't meant to be solved in one fell swoop. He criticized the theory's feeble attempt in solving the problem's scarcity in that the free market will bring better management of resources, thus eliminating scarcity. While the idea sounds plausible, in practice, it just doesn't work because of how certain variables like any greediness will limit the fair distribution of resources, invalidating the point of people's power controlling scarcity. Incredible. It's almost like the more back in time you go, the more arrogant people get. Thank goodness for Keynes correcting whatever mistakes that the classical economist has made. <laughs> I guess you're right. Well, Miss Sheffield, it's been wonderful getting to know you. Um, thank you so much for spending your time on this. Oh, don't mention it. I'm honored to have appeared on your show. Bye now. It's fascinating to see how one spark can ignite a way of thinking that was so revolutionary that it um, propelled us in ways that were previously unimaginable. Economics is such a fascinating subject because it deals with how we humans decide to treat each other um, through resources, for the better or for the worse.